excerpt from Quimper's Brief, a short story written and read by Craig Hilton. Life was hard, and some days were so damn lousy he could grow teeth. One day, for instance, Wimper got bumped off the head of the queue. The brief runner, a mouse dressed in token scraps of clothing and the headband of his trade, had sprinted into the clamour of the main entrance lobby of the magistrate's chambers and bypassed him to slap his left hand on the right shoulder of the brief sitting next to him. An oink of pleasure, one greasy cheek puckering into a fat smile, and he's suddenly cheated out of a paying client. Pick up work as a legal representative by plying the rank could make you a living fit for a domestique, but nothing more. It was a cutthroat existence, notwithstanding that it had been worse, they said, in years gone by, before the introduction of licences, when hundreds of half-baked briefs street-walked in desperation for clients. So while the freeborn class might operate through placed advertisements or by retainers to well-to-do families, your everyday domestique brief was consigned to sit in numerical order with his competition along a bench by the wall like motley birds on a fence. And Wimper was now on that bench, and he was finally number one. The runner should have given the job to him. The twist of paper hastily scribbled out jointly by the prisoner and the arresting officer at the scene and spirited with a set of young legs to the chambers ought to have been pressed into his own palm, not Kelly's. But there they were now, Kelly stooping to drop the runner a few copper coins for the service and the grazed and grubby hands, lamp oil and muskmelon, pocketing them. And he just watched with venom in his mind. Dusk was near. Wimper may not get another case before nightfall, and his district after dark was very dangerous, worse than the landlord or a three-day hunger. Under hooded lids, he watched pig and mouse fade into the corridor's darkness, and then lifted his body onto wiry limbs and started off for the open doors. In his brain, the wheels started turning, and by the bottom step, his course was set. The alleged offence, blasphemous affray, had been committed in a moon pool. That much he had overheard. So logically, there were twelve possible destinations, one for each bailey of the old city. Count only the ones near the chambers, and you had six. The brief runner had been eating muskmelon and handling lamp oil when he saw the rest. Markets were at West Dockside and Tumbledown. Tumbledown was closer. And the story goes on from there. You'll have to buy the book to read it. <laughs>